and it was nicknamed up tourniquet. No one wanted to go on it. I couldn't understand why. And we're working for US intelligence. We had three armored land cruisers. One had a camera on top and we were filming every single street and MSR in the Baghdad area. The locals thought we were Mossad, pulled around into what should have been a busy marketplace and we just got hammered. From the day we were going down to the army careers office, he was like, why don't we join this unit called the Paras? I did P company three times. So I did three tours of Northern Ireland, Sierra Leone, Macedonia, the way my brain works. I just got bored. So. I came out and got wind of the close protection market. As I met them, a massive car bomb went off, killed 17 people. Tried my hand at being a prison officer, did about 12 weeks, not for me. At some point, I knew I wanted to be in the fire service. I went into a house fire. We should have gone left, but instead we went straight upstairs. And as we were upstairs, we had a massive explosion. And if we'd have actually gone left and through the living room, we'd have walked straight into the kitchen. A massive bag of aerosols. It blew the window 20 foot up the garden. Four years ago, I was diagnosed with ADHD. It's changed my life knowing how my brain works. This week on The Debrief, I have a former paratrooper. Chris, how are you, buddy? You all right? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, great. Good to have you on there. I always like a bit of airborne on me show. Like, do you know what I mean? No, fair play. We yeah. have actually met before. Um, I met you over in Arnhem for the uh, 75th anniversary. Well, I wouldn't have remembered a lot about I, it. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> well, I came over for a, for a selfie yeah. and I left the timer on my phone. Yeah. So it counted down awkwardly for 10 seconds. You just looked at me after and went, you map it. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my introduction to Phil. Yeah. So. <laughs> Mate, I was proper drunk that. That, yeah, arm, yeah. that was the 75th, wasn't it? Yeah, 90, uh, 2019. The, 70, yeah. Are you going this year, are you? No, I'm not. I can't make it this year. No, but... yeah, I'm definitely going. I'm, I'm going year, over to Pilgrim Bandits this year. I thought I'll still be van. not going to drive me van over. So, yeah, definitely going. Right. It's going to be a big one this year. Though, oh, definitely. There's a big yeah. one every year, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, that's a shame. Listen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same as I do with all my guests. I'm going to take you back to your childhood, have a little bit of get to know you, and then we'll talk about a few things that you've done or haven't done or, you know what I mean, want to chat about. Happy days. Okay, so let's let's start. Let's take you back exactly there. Let's take you back to when you was a kid. What was it like? Where are you from? Yeah, I'm from a, a place called Arnold, which is a suburb of Nottinghamshire. Okay. Um, grew up in the 80s and 90s. Good time to be alive. Um, yeah, I had a good upbringing. Mum and dad working class. Uh, mum worked in a textiles Stable factory. Stable family? Yeah, yeah. Mum and dad's still married now. 50th wedding anniversary this year. Wow. Um, yeah, they, but dad was a bus driver for 35 years. Okay. Um, yeah, it was pretty good. It was me that was the little shit. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so. Yeah, at least you're honest about it. No, I, I am. And so were you only good at school? Did you play up? Were you sort of like... I, I struggled with school. I struggled all the way through school. Just the, the kind of learning aspect to it. It, yeah. it wasn't for me. But it's not for every kid, is it? No, And I think not. that's what I realised that. Because I was exactly the same. Yeah, it's it's a weird one. It's uh, the, the, the way that they teach and everything else. I've, I really found it frustrating. I was an angry kid um, and I was in a lot of trouble. I was suspended from primary school at the age of what 10. What sort of stuff? Well, I, I, judging by my current career, you'd find this hard to believe. But, you know, with boxers and matches, a genie did a box of matches on the way and chucked it at a lad, <laughs> landed in his coat pocket Ooh. and set his coat on fire. Ooh. It's not good. No. Um, so, yeah, I got suspended from primary school, much to my mum and dad's uh, disappointment. Horror, yeah. Um, my dad ruled the house with a rod of iron. He was of that generation, yeah. which, uh, quite rightly so as well. I needed it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I was arrested maybe two or three times before the age of sort of 16 okay. for various things, mainly fighting. Um, yeah. Got in a lot of trouble fighting throughout the years. Um, and then that kind of came to a, a bit of a head when I hit sort of 17. I was glassed in the face, right, uh, okay. 15 stitches broken nose, fractured jaw. Send them when you should have, should have been receiving, perhaps. Yeah. Probably I, a little bit of your fault for it, gobbing, well, what gobbing off. Yeah, pretty much. Well, what <laughs> happened was is I got a bit of a, a, a kind of a bit of a reputation and it kind of went to my head a little bit, got a yeah. bit cocky with it, got filled in good and proper. And then got potted, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, lesson so learned. did you do anything like cadets or anything like that? Any outside of school activities? Any sport? Were you any good at sport? Uh, I was all right at football, to okay. be honest. Uh, I did a bit of boxing when I was younger. Not a lot, massive amount. That yeah. came later when I joined the forces. Um, but yeah, I, not not really kind of that sport. I was good at cross country as well, but just across the board, nothing okay. in particular. Yeah, yeah. So at 17, you're drifting along. You're doing a few bits and pieces. At what stage do you think to yourself... Tell you what, I'll give the army a go. Well, it was about, my uncle was in the military, he'd done like 25 years. He he was like, worked his way up from private to major. Okay. Uh, and, and one of my other uncles and granddad, my dad tried, but never was, was successful. 
Um, so at 15, I did a like a look at life experience with the Worcestershire Foresters. Okay. Yeah, which yeah, was yeah. my local regiment. Yeah. Um, and the Woofers. They, the Woofers. The as Woofers, they, as that's they what were. they were cool, weren't they? Yeah, they <laughs> were. Um, really enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, did really, really well. Got like top student out of sort of 60 students. So that's what I was going to join. Um, and then me and my best mate, pretty much on the day we were going down to the Army Careers Office, he was like, oh, why don't we join this unit called the Paras? And I was like, ah, all right, what do they do? So I'll jump out of planes and stuff. That's about it. I was like, oh, sound. Signed up to join the Paras. Happy days. <laughs> yeah, knew nothing about it, really. And yeah, that, it was... That's so you went, went for, did you go to the assessment centre, all that sort of stuff? Yeah. Sutton Coldfield, or was it still Sutton Coldfield? It was then? Litchfield at the time. Okay, all right. So I went down and did prac. Okay. Uh, I had a bit of a setback because I had knee problems when I was young. I had oscud salatis in one knee. Okay. Um, it was fine, but I had to go and see a few specialists yeah. before they passed me. Um, yeah, and then I kind of got a date and turned up at Depot. And, and I was it went. Depot Para being where in them days? Uh, so I did basic at Litchfield. Okay. Um, and then went up to Catterick for phase okay, two. Okay, so you, you, yeah, you was after the Aldershot days. Yeah, then. yeah, 97 okay. this was. I was going to give you a bit of a crow then for that. Yeah, no, a bit of a, bit of, <laughs> a, bit of a crow <laughs> bag. It's fair enough, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I mean, uh, Aldershot. What, what, what year did Aldershot finish? Must have been 90s or something, wasn't it? Must have early been early 90s. 90s. Would have yeah. been early 90s, wasn't yeah. it? Because I did, I did the very first P company at Catterick. Right, okay. So that was that was 91, 92, something like that. The all arms Horrid one. training area. In honking place, yeah. It's honking. Honking. I mean, all the shot wasn't the best, was it? But no, yeah, no, yeah. true. <laughs> yeah, no. So how did you do in Depot? Did you enjoy Depot? Uh, I did enjoy it, but I struggled. I did P Company three times, which wow, okay. was something I never kind of... Yeah, I mean, you're a young lad then, aren't you? How old were you? 17, 17, 17 yeah. years old. So 17 years old for P Company. You know, I did it... At, at, I was fit as a butcher's dog when I did it, do you know what I mean? So yeah. it was, you know, I'd been in a few years, I'd been a couple of tours and all that sort of stuff. So for me, it wasn't so bad. But I can imagine as a 17-year-old kid. Yeah, it kind of, I, I, look, I'm, I'm quite, I've always been a big lad. I was quite big when I, when I was sort of 17. So the running side of things, I really found difficult. Tabbing in that, I was all right yeah. with. But, so I did three complete. So that's usually the equaliser. As soon as you pick up a log or stretcher or, yeah. you know, obviously... But running, I couldn't, I, could, I couldn't run that well. No, I, I find it really difficult. I had loads of niggles going yeah. through Dapo, and I never, I would, you know, so I did three complete P companies. Wow, uh, within six months, um, and then the final time, obviously. Well, that's no hills. That's no hills on its own. It's just the mindset for you to keep going to do free because I know one maybe fail back at the same point. Perhaps yeah, I can carry on. But when you do two at your age, you must have been going, oh my. And then you got to go back and do it again because oh, you know no. what's coming then, don't you? Yeah. Well, I had a, I had a bit of a wobble sort of after the second one, where I temp, you know I was tempted to join the Green Jackets. Yeah. And then my depot staff talked me out of it. Uh, and then I went on and did the the, the third P company and um, and, and passed with flying colours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I ended yeah, up yeah. Mill milling five times. True really? story. I thought milled twice, twice the first peak, twice second, and then once on. Yeah, because the you one. you can end up doing it twice, can't you? If yeah. There's not enough to go around, or the numbers need making up, or there's a Rupert needs bashing around. Then. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, I did I did all right again. Like I said to you, you know, off it, I, I kind of you know I, I punched quite hard, so I yeah. did all right in the milling. So I ended up going to battalion with the nickname Hammerhands. Now, oh. that is not what you not want when as an 18-year-old turning up at older shot. In a para battalion. It? Yeah. Did you go two para straight away? Straight away two para, yeah. Okay. Uh, down in older shot. I was down in older shot for about 18 months. Went straight to straight to older shot and then straight out for a Northern Ireland tour in okay. 98. Um, Aunt Nicloy. Okay. Was tiring. Lively? Um, yeah. Well, it, it, it quietened down by the light, late yeah. 90s, hadn't it, Ireland? It was yeah, sort it of late 80s, early yeah. 90s. So it was fairly steady. It was good for soldiering, yeah. you know, being a, a new kind of tour. So it was a Cuds tour, was it? So yeah, was pretty much. yeah, which is the best ones, really. The, the towns can be a, this and that, but at least you're soldiering, aren't you? Yeah. So, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah really, really enjoyable. A lot of flying around in helicopters, patrolling and kind yeah. of muddy fields and lots of cows and stuff <laughs> like that. So, yeah. yeah, it was good stuff. So you've done that. It, presumably, did you, did you move up the ranks? Uh, I got, well, what I did, it was another couple of years and then I, I went on drilling duties and did my, my lance corporal course at, at okay. Pembroke. Uh, so I was probably about 21. Did you do any boxing while you were there? No, oh, I trained a lot for the boxing, sort yeah. of for inter-company level, um, but I never really got picked to fight, unfortunately. Okay, because the Reds love it, don't they? No, yeah, they the love box, it. Their boxing teams are always are always decent as well, aren't they? Yeah, so three the, power box teams. Yeah, can, the competition within the regiment itself must be quite high. Yeah, it, it was, and they tended to pick people that were were well known and it was a bit of a beer my bonnet they picked a lab that was really well known and he got severely dropped um <laughs> and i was a bit like well i don't know whether i'd done any better but in my head i would have done in your own head yeah 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 yeah. so 
you still had this thing with your hammer hands as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I had, a, I suppose, a bit of a point to, to, to prove, as it were. But, yeah, no, it was, it was, it was, got, it just never kind of materialized, sadly, no. the, the boxing for, for the army. But, no, I never did. I never boxed in the army. That's one of the reasons I picked it up as a civvy because I was like, I just want, I don't want to be one of these people that spent his whole life hanging around boxing clubs. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And he'll go and fight the show, mate, going, none. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Go <laughs> right, plum. Then, you know well, I mean? that's it. It's like you've got to, you've got to do it. And it takes, yeah. you know, it, it, it has been said about the whole boxing thing. It's like it does take some balls to get in there and do I, it. I've got respect for anybody yeah. that does it. Do you know what I mean? Whether it be a young person, the old person, you know what I mean? I got through the ropes for the first time at about 40, about 43 years old. 40, Daunting 40 process. Isn't yeah. It? yeah. You know, to fight someone actually on paper who was going to beat the, beat the granny out of me, like, do you know what I mean? But I didn't go on it, but I was sort of like, do you know what I mean? I didn't care. But it is, it's, it's one of them, and it's like a, a love or hate thing. You either, I've seen so many people turn up for a weigh-in at a boxing match yeah. and then have sort of six, seven hours before they fight, and they talk themselves out of it and never come to the fight. Yeah. And it happens quite a lot because you let your kind of... Yeah, you, you can overthink. I could imagine you can overthink a fight. Oh, definitely. Yeah. At any stage of your life, you could probably overthink it. Yeah, like, 100%. I mean. So let's go back to your soldiering days. Yep. Um, what other tours did you do? So I did three tours in Northern Ireland. Wow. Uh, two, two of Ochnacloy. How long was you in for? Seven years. Oh, okay. Wow. Well, three tours in Northern Ireland in seven years. That's yeah. a pretty good game. Um, Sierra Leone. Um, okay. Not, was that the old palace tour? Yeah, that was yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Before Any one panel. Any kinetic stuff there? Anything? No, it was... Did it get noisy at all? No, it didn't. Not, none of the tours that were involved in did during my military time. And right. it was just one of them things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, um, I did Macedonia. Was part of the weapon collection. Yeah, that was quite a decent thing, wasn't it? That was a nice little job, wasn't it? Yeah, that it was, was a good lot of OPs and a lot of like yeah. up on the hills overwatching the sort of weapon collection. Yeah, getting soldiering, isn't it? It's yeah, like proper soldiering. So sort of honing your skills and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, that yeah. was good. And then finished off with the Kabul tour of um, Afghanistan in two thousand and one. I forget the name of that tour. Up. That must have been really early then, wasn't it? That was, that was an it early was like the first. I think it was the first one. Yeah. I think it was literally we flew out New Year's Eve two thousand and one. Obviously, September. Wow, where else were you based on that one? Oh, God, I can't remember the name of it, but we were in Kabul. Camp Suta? No, we weren't in a camp. We was in a bomb damaged building for, right, okay. for like four months. That's right, because they were all out towards where the the, the old palaces used to That's be. That's right, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, we weren't too far yeah, up from yeah, the palace. Yeah, I know where they were. Because yeah, I came out just a little bit after that myself and right. went into the European Commission. So about the same time, we'd have been about the same time. Yeah, to be honest. possibly, yeah. yeah. And there wasn't a lot going on then, was there? Not really. I mean, there People was potential. didn't really know what was going to happen, did they? It was like there was potential for like suicide bombers or something to go pop in town and all that sort of stuff, wasn't there? But... Yeah, yeah, definitely. But it kind of again, it never kind of materialized. I think how patrols ended up getting in a, a, a contact, patrols and snipers getting in a contact at the palace. They put in an OP, yeah, uh, and someone had opened fire. But as far as sort of incident goes, I think that was pretty much it. There was yeah. a lot of standoff with police. You know, we're patrolling through sort of built up areas at night and then police pulling weapons on you. Yeah, yeah, sort yeah. Sort of yeah, tense yeah. moments, but it never kind of... Because they had a curfew there then, didn't they? Yeah, there, there was, was a, a yeah. curfew going on, wasn't there? I That's remember. right, yeah. Because we used to break it to go... I got shot at one night because I, <laughs> I was running back from the from the Dutch embassy. You had to go past this road and at the top there was like a load of jundies at the top there. Like right. that and I see them screaming at me. I'm like, I'll just run up. I'm like, no, it's stopping. And I run around the corner and they, they cut the old... Come that wing down the road, that was like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember there being a curfew. So, what was your favourite tour, do you think? Where, where, did you, where, where did you go that you thought, I like that? Well, it was a couple of overseas exercises that I thought were really good. We did Belize and we did Canada. Belize, yeah, Belize is good, isn't it? Yeah. It's good. It's, it sort of tests you as a, as a soldier. You've yeah. got to be on your game. And I kind of thrived in the jungle, like yeah. with the fitness side of things, where I struggled on the running with these 10 stone wet through platoon commanders. Yeah. Uh, I come into my own in the jungle. You stick with AB1 on Load of kids on. Gym like or whatever. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah, and yeah, I, yeah, And I were good yeah. for that. Um, what so, rank did you get to? I was just a lance chap when I left. Okay. Um, left at 20. Because it is harder in the parachute battalions, isn't it? it, it the ranks, it, you know, to break through corporal to sergeant especially. Oh, yeah. It's you, all dead man's shoes, isn't well, it? Well, it were like senior toms were like eight years in before they went on sort of drilling duties for the, the lance jack. Yeah. So to get it within three or four years of being in at 21, I was quite privileged. I wasn't anything special. I probably just fell kind of at the yeah. right time and or they were short. They were, they were scraping <laughs> the barrel probably. Yeah. <laughs> At least you're honest about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. No, it was really, really good. Sort of, I can't remember what year did I leave after that. I think 2004 I left. Okay. Um, Why did you leave? Um... It, I'll come to it in a bit, but the way my brain works, I just got bored. Um, yeah. I kind of, um, 
just had enough. And I'd, I'd got wind. I had a few mates that had gone on selection uh, and they kind of gave me a bit of in about what was coming in Iraq. Uh, with I was on rear party for the Iraq tour. Yeah. I was in the process of getting out. Um, so I, I came out and got wind of the close protection market. I was a bit like... Fancy a bit knew there was going to be some money to not, be made. Not necessarily the money. I just I'm all about experiences and yeah. doing as much as possible and you know varying stuff. Yeah. So that came about and yeah. That's so did you do a when you got out finally? Did you do a bodyguarding course or you know did you go do no, any courses? No, nothing at the start. I did eventually, but yeah. at the start it wasn't needed. No, but you you know more than anyone. It was uh, the whole circuit thing were closed to paras and marines and anyone. It was pretty much yeah SF. Yeah, uh, and then the Iraq War, two thousand three, opened the Absolutely. door. Absolutely, you know, in those early days of Afghanistan, when I got out there, there was nobody really. It was just a few people, and then all of a sudden, boom! Yeah, Iraq went, and it was like they couldn't fill the slots. Yeah, and it, it just opened the door for everyone, yeah. didn't it? And so, the money was half decent as well, wasn't it? It was back then, and it was like they were throwing money at it. There, there was no, I know it's not necessarily a good thing, but the rules were a bit more lax. Uh, I always found that, and I'm always honest about it, the best time to get in the country was either while the war was still on or just after it was yeah, finished, because yeah. it was lawless. And it, it was. was. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. You weren't staring down the barrel of getting in trouble every two minutes, do you know what I mean? Because that's ultimately where they're at once they get regulated and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, that came later, didn't it, when yeah. they started handing power back to the kind of locals yeah. and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, but it was, it was good. I, I got, uh, basically, I... Sent my CV off to a few companies. A friend of mine put me in touch with a certain company down in London. Um, I went down, had an interview with this ex-officer from from the guard, a guard unit. Yeah. Uh, and he wouldn't really, he, he, he kind of liked what he saw and he liked my little red book and my, my military stuff was good. But he was like, he wouldn't touch me because of my age. He was like, we don't tend to protect people under 25 or certainly 30. So he was like, who's your OC? So I told him the name of my OC. Yeah. He was like, oh, I know. Yeah, and he gave him a ring, come back in. He went, yeah, you're good to go. He's give you a reference. So, wow. And then I fucked it up. So, <laughs> yeah, go on. Tell us about that. Then. No, I, told, <laughs> I went out. And like I say, I was still hot-headed, uh, angry. Uh, just got out of the parachute regiment. Um, so I went over to, to uh, Iraq with this this company, and I got in an altercation with a, an Australian SES guy. Yeah. In, his, in my defense, he was a dick. He was a bit of a bully. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I didn't take kindly to it. Was he still serving? No, no, no. He was. He was out. He was, he was, okay. So the company I worked for, they had a big click between the British, the Australians, and the South Africans. The okay. Australians were running the sort of training side to this close protection company. Yeah. Um, and I got in a bit of an altercation with him over. So he called, believe it or not, he called a contact on the ground as a drill, and that is a god's honest truth, um, which is a no go. Yeah. Anyone in the British Army will tell you that you don't do that. And he called a contact out on the ground on the way back for some rangers as a drill and then told everyone it was a drill when we got back. So everyone's in vehicles like, what the fuck's going off here? You know, ready to go. Sort yeah, of. yeah, 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 yeah. We have live ammunition as and well. Live ammunition. I mean? That's insane. I know. And so we were like, that's, I don't know what you're taught, but that's a massive no no. Yeah. So uh, I ended up having a disagreement and ended up punching him several times. So, um, and then got <laughs> sacked. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. I, I, negotiate, negotiate. Yeah. <laughs> um, he did front me first, but I ended up punching him a few times and, yeah. and, and, and then leaving the company pretty sharpish. So, okay. um, that kind of put a bit of a, I was only there a week. So that put a bit of wow. a, yeah, it put a bit of a dampener <laughs> on thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I came home for a bit and then get, tried my hand at being a prison officer. Okay. Uh, did about 12 weeks as a prison officer. How did that officer. go? Not for me. No? No. I was uh, going to say, I've been in there. I've been in Nick, but on the other side of the fence. I've right. remanded, like, do you know what I mean? And I saw the prison officers. It's a hell of a job, isn't it? it you, you get from people me. testing they just get, you. Get, yeah, exactly, you get messed about all day. So you, at the end of the day, what, what the prison officers tend to do is go, right, I'll tell you what, Sodger, you'll all be on this. You'll all, and, I, and then they don't talk to anybody. Then nobody's ever taken seriously. And yep. it's like, ugh. And so they, from, the, from the other side of the fence, it must have been a tedious, just horrendous. Yeah, well, I, believe it or not, after what I've just said, I'm, I'm not really a confrontation. I try and yeah. avoid it at all costs, but it seems to find me. Yeah. Um, so in the prison service, you're kind of constant confrontation they're on you they're trying to test the boundaries and when yeah. you're new as well they're like you don't know what well, you're pretty big can. then as well yeah yeah, yeah you're, I'm quite pretty, a big you're quite then. a lump now do you know what I mean? yeah. So. Um, so yeah i've always been a bit of a lump i've been fatter yeah. and i've trimmed down and like yo-yoing through yeah, the years yeah, yeah, yeah. um but yeah so they, i just couldn't get on with it and i found myself being gobbed off at i remember a scouse prisoner was literally gobbing off really close to my face and i weighed him up for a headbutt 
the red mists were closing down. And I yeah, thought, yeah, if yeah. I don't leave this job, I'm going to end up in here um, as a prisoner. Yeah, because it would be fairly unforgiving if you did just suddenly lose it. I'll tell you what, <laughs> give someone a, yeah. a good... A good a good, good bouncing round, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, so I kind of thought and then you're maybe, all the wrong one, aren't you? Yeah, well, exactly. And, and like, the, the, the person in particular wasn't a very nice person. He was in for some pretty horrible stuff. It was a yeah. cat bee prison. Um, so, yeah, I, I kind of thought this in for me. So I tried my hand kind of trying to get back out to, to, to on the CP market. Did you ever think about joining the army again? Well, that came a bit later after the sort of, I read about the three para tour in 2006 of sort of southern Afghanistan, you know, when yeah. they were like last rounds in Sangin and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I mean, they had it, didn't they? Yeah, they, they, they went out and it was just, it was everything you wanted, wasn't it? Do you yeah. know what I mean? They, and they got it. Yeah, so. I, that, that was, I read that book and then I contemplated sort of getting back in around 2008. How before. old were you then? So I would have been 28. Oh, that would have been an ideal time really to get in, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would have been, yeah. But again, other things kind of... I went actually to, to the recruit um, place. Yeah. And, you know, as you go on an FTRS. Yes, that's right. Full time reserve. Full, yeah, that's it, yeah, yeah. Uh, and sort of did the first day. And at the same time, I got offered a job on convoys uh, out in Iraq. Okay. Sort of running convoys from the sort of Kuwaiti border up to Baghdad. Yeah. On quite a lot of money. So I went in and spoke to the captain, who was a Power Edge captain at the time, and just said... This is my circumstance. I'm 28 now. I'm going back as a private. They wouldn't let me keep my rank because I've been out four or five years. Okay. Um, or I've got this offer. And he just went, if I were you, I'd go and take that. So that's what I did. Okay. So I went back out there. So Back out to the right, running convoys. I've run a few yeah. convoys up there. It's a, it's a honking old route, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. Well, I work, I work for the company I worked for before that as well. I kind of uh, run by Pete O'Hare and Steve Powell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, no, if no, you know no. them. Yeah, 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 they, yeah. they run a company out in... Uh, a rap that I sort of started working for and we were yeah. like one of the first teams to go out with them um, so we were running sort of trips up and down to buy up root Irish soft skin vehicles maybe five or six times a day yeah, yeah, yeah. just totally like unaware of what was going off really yeah um, yeah so because it, it was quite dangerous down there there was a lot of there was a lot of stuff wanted you dead down that area you, know what oh, I mean? you, had to run, you run your luck I did a few things around that area Oh, we, we actually I wasn't there the week out, but one of our clients got done in a in a in a roadside in a roadside ambush. Yeah. So it wasn't it wasn't the given that you could go from A to B. You had to be, uh, keep your wits about you, didn't you? Yeah, one hundred percent. I think it went to around that time when the Edinburgh Riss contact that's quite famous on the on route Irish, where they got opened up from from that's right. the right hand side. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And, and Security Force had a big one, didn't they? Actually, on the border, didn't they? That's right. Go, they... Going backwards and forwards, and then two of them got they tried to pinch two of them in a cab. And then the guy in the back knifed the driver and they got out and one got away, one got shot. Yeah, it was yeah. a right old, yeah, horrible, horrible business. So it was a messy old time yeah. out there. Yeah, like yeah, like yeah, we yeah. said before, there was, there's no real rules, no real rules of engagement. It was pretty, it was like the Wild West. At, yeah. The yeah, it days. was. Yeah, 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 yeah. You rode your luck, didn't you? Yeah, you did. And I, I've always joked about the fact that I've had nine lives. Like, yeah. because one, so we were doing a bit of training for this company, sort of training some of the local nationals on like first aid weapons and stuff, because they were then going to go on and be like, the better ones were going to be sort of some of the close protection drivers. Yeah. Uh, some of them were going to be security for villas outside the green. Yeah, room. yeah, that's right, yeah. And uh, my job on this particular day was to sign maybe 20, 30 local nationals in to, to, to do some training. Um, and we used to sign them in at the outer checkpoint of the green zone and then walk them to the inner checkpoint and get them through the yank, get sort of... Yeah, 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 yeah. On this particular day, the, the, the local army had let them come to the inner checkpoint so I met them there. As I met them, a massive car bomb went off at the out out a checkpoint, killed seventeen people. It about took took us off our feet the size of the explosion. So I was just like, if I had a, any other day, you'd have been down there. I'd have been down there. Yeah. yeah so yeah, I was yeah. like, well, that was pretty lucky. Yeah. And this continued throughout bits and stuff that I've missed or changed drivers yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, so, just by the skin like of your cat. teeth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so did you do? Where else did you do on the circuit? On the on the circuit, as we call it, the circus. Um, well, I, I, I kind of did sort of a couple of years with, with that company yeah, uh, and then moved on, came home. I used to do like little stints and then maybe a year or so and then come home for a bit. Yeah. Um, I then went out with uh, another company. Yeah. Um, now this one's ridiculous. And again, it's a, it's a true story. Um, so the company itself is a well-known company, Tim Spicer. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, no, it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I've met him a couple of times. But, Obviously, they had Op Matrix, um, yeah. and one of the other contracts on the side was the one called Op Tourist, okay. and it was nicknamed Op Tourniquet. No one wanted to go on it. I couldn't understand why. I thought it was quite exciting. 
Um, and basically what we're doing, we're working for US intelligence. We had three armoured land cruisers. One had a camera on top and we were filming every single street and road and MSR in the Baghdad area. So driving around at 30 mile an hour. <laughs> so you know yourself, the yeah. most dangerous place in Iraq <laughs> <at> the clues. <laughs> is on the roads, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it was interesting. So yeah, we, we kind of drove around. And for a while, not a lot happened. We were like, this is, you know, someone's got to give you. Yeah. Yeah, we try not to set patterns. We do different areas every day. Yeah. But we were literally out eight hours a day filming and trundling along. And then we got wind from our drivers that were local nationals that the locals thought we were Mossad. It was a rumour, and that's not what you want either, is it? No, no, no that's not okay. at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the only people that they hate more than the Americans would be, you know. Yeah, so yeah, 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 it, it, was course, a, yeah. it was a bit like, right, so, and I, I, one particular day, um, after weeks of it being completely quiet, not a lot happening, and, and we've been literally in places of Baghdad that probably no other Western has been, Mm. We, we got bogged down in Saddam City, which is now Saddam City. Yeah. Uh, Saddam City is now Saddam City. Uh, all three Land Cruisers bogged down in up to the axles, surrounded by hundreds of people, just the three three vehicles. Yeah. And thinking, oh, shit. Luckily, a local comer pulled us out with a JCB. Some really good photos of us sunk to the axles wow. scattered. So you're thinking, this is, you know, something's going to happen. And nothing did. Um, yeah, and we, we it was Boxing Day, 2000 and... 2009, I think it was, uh, pulled around into what should have been a busy marketplace. Um, and we just got hammered absolutely from all angles. Really? Yeah, it got a proper, <laughs> proper, decent ambush. I mean, it was only probably a couple of minutes, but it yeah. felt like a, a long, long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. We, we were in armored land cruisers, um, so it weren't too much. But yeah, they just popped out from behind a corner. I've got the video of that as well, because he was taking pictures and filming as yeah. part of, you know, for, for whatever and he dropped his camera and it hit record off the floor and caught the whole thing as if you know as it was going wow. off so it's pretty good um yeah and i think the rear gunner matt he, he slotted three guys uh and then they started traversing over roops and firing down on us so Jeez. so we drove out of it it, it, it was yeah. cool but we got gated for a bit after that until there was a bit of a, an investigation yeah i can imagine yeah Gated on full pay though, hopefully. Oh yeah, without doubt. Yeah, well there you go. That's it was I terrible. Was. I had to around <laughs> Christmas the, time with Jack Daniels. The green zone. <laughs> yeah, terrible uh, it was. There's a couple of bars in the green zone, weren't there? In yeah. the day? There was a couple of places you could go, weren't there? Well, they were, but it was like a bit of a dodgy mix, wouldn't it? Because you'd go in there and there'd be people with like weapons slung, stuff yeah. having a pint. You just yeah. think, yeah, you think lot, if it goes off in here, yeah, 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 yeah. And there was a few incidents with it people was, getting was, properly yeah. weighed in, like you know what I mean, which was honking, wasn't it? But you it was always going to happen. There's a lot of testosterone. And there's alcohol, massive amounts and then of testosterone, and, and, and guys actually giving it proper roid rage as well, oh, aren't they? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I mean, in, in, interesting. <laughs> a cocktail, times. a cocktail of stupidity, <laughs> yeah. wasn't it? Really? Yeah, it was indeed. <laughs> and a lot of money being changing hands as well, weren't they? You could make a lot of money. Even on side hustles, you know, I was selling weapons, ammunition and all sorts. Right. Those little side hustles, like, do you know what I mean? And just everywhere I could nick a quid, I was. Well, that was the thing. If you knew the right people yeah. and stuff like that, it was an open market for, for well, for a long time, wasn't it? And yeah. then, like I say, it kind of, I think... Because everybody, even on the circuit, even if you had, you know, do you want a, do you want a buckshee pistol, mate? Do you know what I mean? Would you fancy it? You, oh, yeah, I'll have that, mate. Do you know what I mean? You, yeah. you could always get rid of a piece of kit somewhere. Like, and it was... Wasn't like doing it in the UK. It was you weren't going to get done for it, were you? Do you know what I mean? So I was shifting stuff left, right, and centre. Like, do yeah. you know what I mean? I just find it bizarre. I find it really bizarre because obviously I'd come from the British Army where things are quite strict. Well, it's regulated. They're straight, and, and aren't you they? Sign it's, weapons it's, yeah, out. It's a, and, yeah, it's serial numbered. It better come back with the right bits on it yeah. and all that sort of stuff. And I just remember a, a, a lad that was in my team. He got he's finally got his gorilla. You know the big boxes that you had, the black mm. boxes with the, the catches on. He'd finally got his. He'd been waiting for ages. It had turned up, and he opened it. It had an M60 in it. And I were like, what are you doing with that? He was like, oh, yeah, I just picked it up. And yeah, I was yeah, like, this yeah. is just crazy. I had all sorts of, I, I had a G3, which I think probably someone's still got out there now. I, mean, right. I had this G3 Passed for around. years. Loved it. Loved it. I had this G3 for years. And that I'd got that off a mate of mine who was still serving. And right. that had come sort of like second hand, third hand through someone else who said, yeah, there's one going. And I'm like, yeah, I'll have that. <laughs> and of course, you always had money in them days, didn't you? Yeah, no, yeah, it yeah. wasn't like, oh, well, I'll have to save up for that. It was like, there you go. Yeah. How much do you want? Dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Big pile of Benjamin Franklin going yeah, this way, yeah, like, you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Oh, so how long did you do in Iraq, all told? Um, so on and off, sort of six years. 
sort of having bits of breaks. Yeah, so in and, in and out. You, you needed to get out sometimes, didn't you? Yeah, these guys that have spent, like one of my mates I was chatting to the other day, he spent 20 years out there. He went out in 2003, but he's been out there for 20 years. He's just come back and got a job. And I just think, and I think what a lot of guys did is they, they because you're on good money, they, they kind of mortgage themselves up to the hilt. Exactly. And then when they get a bad incident, because it only takes one yeah, to yeah, scare yeah, the yeah, shit yeah, out of yeah. you and think, right, I'm going home. They couldn't. Whereas I never did that. I was no. quite, not. I wouldn't say sensible with it, but I kind of, you know. No, I get that. And then, like, the prices came down quite severely, didn't they? Yeah. But the guys that had taken loans on cars, you know, were driving around in Maseratis and stuff. Yeah, yeah. They had to stay. Yeah. And they had to take whatever they were offered because they couldn't afford their mortgages and all the rest of the stuff. Absolutely. That they, they, I did the same as you. I was sort of like, I wanted I, I, to be I'd able drive to... a shed, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's my shed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah 100%. No, I was the same. I had a crappy yeah. Vectra. Yeah. I just, do you know what I mean? And yeah, it doesn't matter, a... does it? No, it didn't matter. Well, I was never there, so I didn't see the point. Waste. And I don't like to waste money on material, things like that. Anyway. Yeah. I never have. So it was never about the money or anything like that. I could say it was more about... The experience yeah, of doing it and definitely. going out there and getting some stuff done. Yeah. Uh, that, that tourist contract kind of... Uh, it was deemed too dangerous. We got RKG three'd as well. Um, and again, I'd swapped with the lad. He'd asked, we just swapped around. I was supposed to be driving the Charlie vehicle and we'd swapped. Uh, and he got RKG three'd, uh, blew his door off, frag through the legs. He's still in a pickle with it now. Really? Um, yeah, a lad called it. Matt. Um, yeah, uh, do you know what, as well? And as a civvy, when that sort of stuff happened, if you were serving, you sort of like, you probably got looked after better than if you were a civvy, didn't you? Because some of these companies just didn't care about you, did they? They couldn't straight care. Away, yeah. They didn't care. It was yeah. like, you know, off you go, right, okay, well, what, what do you mean you can't work tomorrow, your legs come off? All right, well, right, get him out of here. We need another bloke with a leg. Like, <laughs> get rid of him. Well, I was lucky that, that that particular company was one of the kind of better ones. Yeah. They, they, they had, like, their own uniform. You had, like, the Nomex suits. Yeah, and, and yeah there, a, were, there were some that were trying. But yeah. do you know what, for me, and that, this done my head in as well, so... I'm not going to name the companies in particular, but we know who they were. Once they went down that uniformed road, for me, I'd, I'd gone to Hereford to get away from that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then they sort of like were, were almost becoming Green Army. 100%, yeah. It was, it was run like it, wasn't it? It was yeah. like exactly the same, do you know what I mean? Almost to the point that there was rank and file. There was, know I mean? yeah. You used to have to pass the fitness test. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Yeah, I don't want to do that. They gave quite a stringent fitness yeah. test with, with that particular company, yeah. like two mile of full kit. I uh, get that, and I do think, you know, there was people out there, especially sometimes, who were completely unfit for yeah. purpose, doing all sorts of jobs, and I'm thinking to myself, oh, if that goes noisy, do you know what I mean? I don't want to be anywhere near you lot, do you know what I mean? Yeah. You saw a lot of that out there, didn't you? Oh, so I understand God, yeah. why companies did that. But it wasn't for me. I didn't want to be involved in that. No, I just kind of, it was the way, I didn't, none of it's planned. I've literally <laughs> stumbled through life and ended up yeah. right place at the right time, you know, or vice versa. Um, so, yeah, it was just that's where I ended up that, uh, and the contracts were pretty good. So you came out of there? Well, I, I came, that, that contract came to a bit of an end. Um, I came in and I went backpacking for seven months, had yeah. a bit of money saved around the world, um, sort of Asia. Okay. Um, sort of Australia and the States and stuff. Nice. Enjoy that? Uh, yeah, absolutely brilliant, yeah. Yeah. Because um, that's on your own terms as well, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. And, I, you know, I had a fair bit of money, so I didn't really have to scrimp. Yeah. I did all sorts of bungee jumps, skydive. I didn't have to worry about, oh, uh, I didn't have to work while I was doing it. Yeah. Um, so that were really good. Uh, I came back in the January, I think, 2010, uh, and then went out uh, on the Colonel CP team with the, the same uh, the same company. Okay. Um, and the colonel, he was rebuilding sort of Iraq, part yep. of in, in charge of the restructuring of Iraq schools and hospitals. And stuff like that. So I believe he's now at the Pentagon now. He oh, okay. did really, really well. Uh, but he never wanted to fly. He always wanted to drive. Um, so again, there was a few incidents. But the one that made me almost sack it, so to speak, out there and come home, driving down the road, I was driving a Charlie vehicle, uh, RKG3 attack, where, which oh, I'm sure you're more than aware of what they are, but the armor piercing yeah. grenades um saw a guy hands behind his back stood at the side of the road and then just launched it at my vehicle and it hit right where the door handle there uh, was never detonated never detonated wow and we saw a u.s call sign coming out of a camp on the way in t to kind of tell them what had happened uh, and then we saw him in the defect that night and they went yeah we found it we blew it in place but the pin had been pulled there was no reason it didn't detonate it just didn't it was lucky so we're like ah, fucking hell that yeah. life. Jumped I know up. it was chalk another one off. Um, so yeah, so that that was it. And about th sort of not long after that, sort of July time, it was the time a little boy was born. So I was like, you know what, 
I'm a bit bored of it now. Things were changing. Yeah. Power was being handed back. Money was dropping. Teams were getting mixed. Um, I was like, no, I'm I'm happy. To yeah. Try too many to things went against you, didn't they? Do you know yeah. what I mean? To make it worth certainly weren't worth my my while staying out there. I just couldn't be bothered with it anymore. No, really same. Um, so. In fact, I, I, I did a job on an oil rig and it was just horrendous. Do you know what I mean? I was just, right. I was there on my own with a load of Iraqis and I was like, I was there for sort of like four months. And I was, at the end of that four months, I went, yeah, just pay me and I'm going, yeah, I'm going to I ain't else. never coming back again. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so you did the anti piracy stuff for a bit as well. Well, I did. I came in for a little bit and started getting involved with the surveillance side of things, like private yeah. investigator. I did a surveillance course. Okay. In the UK? In, in the UK. Um, well, some of it was abroad. I, I got a lot of it were marital stuff. Yeah, so okay. I, dull. It's not really glamorous as such. Um, I got flew out to Egypt to follow a guy, a, a, a girl around that was sort of engaged to this very wealthy guy. Wanted to follow him for a week. She was with a mate, see if she was up to no. She didn't do anything, bless her. Um, so stuff like that. Yeah. And then I got, I got two big celebrity jobs, actually. One a famous professional football, or I'm sworn to secrecy about yeah. for one reason or another for the foreseeable future. I've spoke to him, so yeah. Uh, and then the other one is a well-known chef who swears a lot. Uh, he uh, he kind of employed me to follow his father-in-law around London because um, he was kind of allegedly uh, embezzling money out of the company and having an affair with someone inside the company. So I, I spent two weeks following him around London on my jack, which is no mean No, surveillance don't work on your own, mate. It don't, you just can't do it. I've had... Uh, almost penny pinch, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah. If, you, if you want to put surveillance on a job, if you've got money, that's fine. But I need an eighteen-man team. Do you know exactly. What I mean? Minimum. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I need some motors, a bike, and then when their eyes go, uh, uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Well, have you got money or not, son? <laughs> well, exactly. They're not going to pay it, are they? Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. For this particular job, though, I assume the amount he was paying the company that I was subcontracted yeah. to, they probably could have afforded, but they didn't. They kind of scrimped a bit. So yeah, I got more look more than sort of judgment I, yeah. I followed him to this house out at ascot it was all in the papers 2010 daily mail the sun all the all the stuff that i'd, I'd done uh, and i followed him around the back of this went around the back of this house and he was in there playing with this sort of topless woman in the window it's a surveillance <laughs> dream yeah. so i got these photos i couldn't believe my luck and i just wandered around the back of this mansion um yeah got got all these photos um, and it turned out she was the accountant allegedly of the uh, of the company. Wow! So proper couldn't have got any. Did you get a bonus for that? No, I didn't know. I oh. got I got a, a thank you from said chef saying thank you for your work. But I was like, yeah. well, if he's watching, I might hopefully get me a free yeah, meal at one of his restaurants. Sort him out, mate. You know, a thank you, a thank you don't work. A thank you don't pay your bills, all right? No, no. But I mean, I was I was paid well for the for yeah. the two weeks that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah. it was a bit of a graft. Yeah, you've uh, had a result there. Yeah, you've definitely. had two for the price of one there, my friend. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So sort him out. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I end up sort of dropping on to. Have you ever seen Rogue Traders as well? Yeah, yeah, so I've done. Up, yeah. A, a lot of the background stuff for that, the surveillance work. Again, it was just because it fell in the Midlands. Couple well, of I did some stuff for them. We turned up at a, a, a junkyard, and this geezer come out, and I'm like, oh my god. Were you back watching them? Yeah, 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 yeah. I did, did a bit of that. The pole with the, with the stupid like yeah. rabbit on the end of it. Like I'll pretend to be the sound man. Hmm. And <laughs> I remember this geezer once he comes walking out, and I'm like, he was huge. And I'm thinking to myself, he comes walking into this yard. We've we've put a car across the, across the thing so these can't get out. He's come walking around the car, and I think they've called him up. They've obviously called him. He's a lump, and I thought he's going to punch me. So I've, <laughs> I've made up my own mind. As soon as he gets like there, he's having this stick, and then I'm on him. Right. Do you know what I mean? And then he got to about that, and he went, "Do you do tyres in here, mate?" <laughs> Wrong bloke. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, thank God, thank God for that. <laughs> Yeah, so you did Rogue Traders. Yeah, I did it for... Well, I did a couple of backwatching. I did Jess Ennis's Homecoming in Sheffield and I was stood next to uh, uh, Johnny Nelson, kind of watching out. For, you look after the media. Yeah, 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 that's no right, yeah. It's not really yeah. a, a big gig, but it, again... No, it was, it's all right, isn't it? It gets yeah. you around, doesn't it? Yeah. It was um, quite, some of them were quite good money as well, didn't they, yeah, for, they for the bad. UK, which was all right, wasn't it? Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so. they, they, they were bad and they kind of... They, they filled a few gaps. But yeah, I kind of end up doing the surveillance more so that all the build-up to the programmes... Um, so following, like, there was one in... How in, did you get into surveillance? Because it wasn't really a, it, it just a natural progression from what you were I doing? I sent or? my CV out to a company in Nottingham and they were like, oh, we like what you've done so far, would you... And they put me through wow. a surveillance okay. course and then, and then went from there. And oh, I just nice. happened... Again, a lot of it would look. Um, yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it were all right. It were good. But, yeah, the, the stuff, maybe three years running the road trader stuff, every sort of springtime, yeah. I, I kind of I get to follow them around, find out key codes for the building, best access. So the so when the crew went in, 
they could kind of pick where they were going to leave from or where they were going to run off from. Yeah, we always had a brief of how it was going to go yeah. or how they, well, they presumed it was going to go. Like, do you know what I mean? So. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was. I mean, it sounds all glamorous, but I remember that one in Kirby Muxlow. I've just driven down. It's on the, on the outskirts of Leicester. And um, it, they were down this track and it was one of the hottest days in the year. And I, and I was sat in the car practicing in my pants. And then this big gangster plumber that he was a bit of a gangster he was robbing old ladies and stuff and he come and sat on my bonnet so i'm in the back of this car <laughs> taking photos <laughs> of him as he sat on my bonnet thinking if he spots me in here he's literally not only am i in my pants but he's going to choke me out so, <laughs> um, you get done in your pants yeah you know what i mean it's not it's not a good look is it so yeah so and then and then the anti-piracy again i just it sort of i mean you did and i don't what years did you do it. Oh dear! It must. Have, I was quite early in on it because there was no weapons. There was no. You couldn't go and get. There yeah, was none of these armories. Thing. There was no floating armories. There was nowhere you could go in sort of like Sri Lanka. You literally turned up and got my very first trip. I got a, a load of gardening twine. <laughs> that was the wire. They'd asked for wire. They sent a load of gardening twine, and that was it. Bust on you get. Crack Just on, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, but they were fun because it was like being in the A team. Because you'd get on the ship, go and see the bosun, raid yep. the bosun's store, start sort of like painting decks with oil Petrol and bombs. Yeah, 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 everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I thought they were quite good fun. Yeah, it was. It was, but it was like you had to have your wits about you. So yeah. I, I did probably several transits when I first started uh, that were no weapons. Yeah. So again, we got the chief engineer to knock us up some spears, yeah. uh, petrol bombs, razor flares, wire, and all, whatever all the rest you of could. the stuff you could get your hands on. Yeah. Yeah, and and thankfully them sort of trips were uneventful you know you saw skiffs in the distance and you were yeah. like fuck the arse twitching moment yeah. because it's like to be honest if they <laughs> wanted to get on while you've got molotov cocktails and spits they're it's gonna not, get on not great is it it's not great yeah so uh yeah and i, I kind of did about three years of that all, all over the place uh trips with weapons few incidents with pirates nothing nothing major fired a few warning shots yeah with pirates but again it was fairly steady. It was more that, again, the enjoyment was that. I mean, I got stranded in Madagascar for five days. And, you know, again, if, if as experiences go, I thought that was pretty awesome. Yeah, 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 got yeah, stuck cool. there because of the weather and, and yeah. bits and They, they were so. cool places to go as well. Yeah. All around the Indian. Once it branched out, once at one stage, it was literally just Muscat to up to up to Egypt, and that was it. Oh, man, or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then it sort of like branched right out. Then you were going to Madagascar, you were going to Tanzania. Mauritius. And, yeah, all, all the way to Tanzania, that's right, yeah. So it became sort of like, it was a bit of a jolly, wasn't it? Yeah, so, we, we, where we, am I going next? Yeah, <laughs> and, and our company had a villa in, in, in Sri Lanka, so a lot of the time, you know, you'd spend yeah, I like Sri Lanka. a couple of weeks there down at Tuna Bar in, in Sri Lanka, in that's Gaul. Right. Gaul. That's right, Yeah. <laughs> I remember the first hotel I stayed in in Gaul, because that's where the tsunami was, wasn't it? Yeah, that's and right. And had yeah. all tie marks around the around the top of the ceiling. Where Ridiculously the room high, The room I was in had obviously been underwater. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but great place, Sri Lanka. Yeah, wasn't cheap it? as chips. Food was lovely, wasn't it? Yeah, food was nice. Beer was cheap. Yeah. Uh, and it was kind of like a, an early place for, for backpackers as well. So there was a lot of backpackers yeah. the, the, down on that beach scene in Gaul. I mean, up north they had a lot of trouble there, didn't they? Because they had the Tamil Tigers and all that's that sort right, of stuff. Yeah, so there yeah. was some proper stuff going on there. Yeah. But down south couldn't have been couldn't have been better. It was a proper paradise. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah, like I said, our company had a villa on the beach, in yeah. a pool, and I, and I was getting paid to to, to be there. I, yeah. I try and work it that I do sort of minimum of a month on, a month off for the yeah. merchant shipping allowance yeah. that it was called. Um, but yeah, then I'd do bits and bobs when I got home on my month off, a bit more surveillance or yeah. a bit of door work or, or or all sorts, you know, just for extra money really. Yeah. So yeah, and then uh, that was that 2013. Yeah, I'd, I'd applied for the fire service. Okay, three times over. What made you sort of like think about the fire service? Steady as this. Well, like... uh, one of my good friends at primary school, his dad was a firefighter, a okay. called Andy, and I was kind of at some point, I wanted, I knew I wanted to be in the fire service. Okay, um, so I applied in two thousand and sort of three, two thousand four, as I was leaving the military, got to the interview, wasn't successful. Uh, subsequent, subsequently uh, applied, I think two thousand and. Eight yeah. again for Nottinghamshire Fire and Rescue. Uh, interview stage again, not successful. Shit at interviewing, as you can probably tell. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then yeah, you're on the phone at the moment. Yeah, yeah no, I'm on, I'm on a Freddy. Um, and then the the, the third time, uh, I, I I got through, but I got sent a letter. I was at home from yeah. from the anti piracy stuff, and I got a letter saying basically, you know, you've been successful. We're running three courses. You're on the third course, which okay. usually meant I weren't good enough for the first two courses because I interviewed yeah, 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 not yeah, scored yeah. highly enough on the interview okay and i knew i hadn't when they were interviewing me i wasn't hitting all the right words I, I just I, I was rubbish at the old interview yeah um yeah and then so 
as I was floating off uh, Dubai on one of them floating armories that they used to have. I don't, did they have them when you? No, well, them? they were just coming in. I never used one, but they were just coming in when yeah. I sort of like finished doing it. I mean, they were all right. You kind of a bit of sunbathing, but yeah. they, they were packed and crammed with food with crap. But you know, I'm sat there, got a bit of Wi-Fi, and then had an yeah. email saying, "Sorry, you've not been successful. You've not been picked. We're not running a third course." So I was like, "You're fucking joking me!" After all this time, I finally passed, and now they're not running a third course. So I decided to tech uh, like a ten week ship. Uh, on on a, on a, it was going all around the coast of India, Saudi, and yeah. all over the place. Chinese ship. I was the only English speaker, which was interesting for ten weeks. You start to question Chinese. your sanity. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, I was looking over the bridge and thinking the food was awful on the Chinese <sighs> ships. I did as well. And they used I, to give you like a like a knuckle of chicken. Do you know, what I mean? chicken knuckle. I got really really bad food poisoning. Yeah, yeah. I was like kind of yeah. It it weren't it weren't good. Um, but yeah, so about eight weeks, well, less than that, probably five weeks into it, I got a call on a sat phone saying, you need to get home from, from my ex-wife. You need to get home because um, they've changed their mind. You're on a sort of your medicals in such and such a few weeks. So I had to speak to the captain. I was like, right, where are we docking? I need to get off. I've got a family emergency. <laughs> Bluffed it. Yeah. Um, and basically, yeah, got, um, got off in Jeddah. Uh, cost me five grand to get back. <laughs> Uh, fly back, and I got back with a day to spare. Wow. Had the medical passed and then and joined the fire service. Well, was it, so what was the training out of the fire service? Um, out of everything I'd done physically, obviously with the paras and, and yeah. everything else, it, it wasn't, to do, it was a lot of tr sort of intense stuff with training. Yeah. I don't think people realise there's a lot of sort of behind the fire, so it's a lot of learning in classrooms as there's well. There's a lot of people. science to fire, how it works yeah, and all that sort of I, stuff. We did a bit of fire training was it, when I was at Hereford, but nothing to the level that you've done, but, you know, you had to understand... The fire triangle. Fire triangle. And then you had to understand all these bits and pieces and then you did all the way of flash over works and all that oh, sort of stuff. Draft, flash yeah, 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 yeah. The kind of signs and symptoms yeah. and stuff like that. So th there's a hell of a lot. And it, I'd say that like literally it was you're bombarded with it. Yeah. And then there was the physical side of it as well. You're out doing fitness every day. And none of it was I mean, I'd just got off the ship, so I was training three times a day on the ship because there's nothing else to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um yeah. To come back, I didn't like 14 7 on the bleep test. I was like, fit as a <laughs> butcher's dog. And then the second, one of the second or third runs with the fire service, they took us out and did some hill sprints. And I set off up the hill in front of most people. Groin went Oof. grade two tear, stroke grade three tear of my adductor longus in, in my groin, which is a killer, yeah. like a footballing injury. Um, and I should have really been off the course, but I just taped it up. I had about 16 physio sessions on it. My whole thigh went black um, wow. and I thought if I come off this and they never run another recruits course for another, about another six years after that wow. so I had no so room. I didn't do, know that do or die yeah so strapped it up taped it up and sort of cracked on hobbled my way through it it's the paratrooper uh, kicking in the well head. yeah a little bit but it's causing <laughs> no end of dramas from now on I've had hamstring problems really yeah, but it is what it is I got in so, but it was it was good. It was intense. So you've been you're still in now, aren't you? Still so in you've now. You've been yeah. in a fair few years. Ten now, years. Ten years. Well, this is the eleventh year. How many the, the call outs we've had? Have you had any that spring to mind? What was your first call out like? The, this is what I'm saying about the nine lives again. So my first <laughs> BA wear, um, I went into a house fire, and it was a bit uh, not necessarily a mistake. You're never supposed to go above the fire floor. Okay. Um, so we went into this property, and it, all the it indicated that it was the fire was in the top bedroom. There's smoke blowing out the top window. Um, I went in with my BAE partner and we should have gone left and gone round the living room and then into the kitchen where we'd have found a fire. But instead, we went straight upstairs with my BAE partner. And as we were upstairs, we had a massive explosion. Sort of your evacuation whistles going off, everyone shouting us to get out over the radio, yeah. charging down the stairs out. And if we'd have actually gone left and through the living room, we'd have walked straight into the kitchen. A massive, massive bag of aerosols. <laughs> it blew the window 20 foot up the garden. Wow. And blew out an air brick in the side of the house uh, and everything else. Wow. So we'd have walked straight in pretty much on top of it. And I'm not saying it to killed us, but it's certainly... Yeah, you had a major ears ring, that's for sure, isn't it? Yeah. So <laughs> I was a bit like... So that was my first BA wear. So wow. I was a bit like, fucking hell. That, that was that lucky. Um, so yeah, I'm at a fairly busy station uh, in the north of Nottingham, Mansfield. Okay. Mansfield. Um, around Mansfield, you've got a mixed bag, some affluent areas and sort of some, some high poverty as well. So yeah. that, kind of breeds 
house fires and yeah, 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 alcohol yeah, yeah. and drugs yeah. and stuff, and it brings house fires. So yeah, we've had some really, really interesting. But on the whole, you enjoy it. Yeah. I, I'm not going to go too far into the firefighting stuff because we, we're we're going to run out of time eventually. But I, I do want to touch on your boxing because you do a lot of boxing, don't you? You like a bit of boxing. You like I a, do. You like, yeah. a, you like a tear up. Yeah, I do. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've had quite a few now. I fight for the fire service again. Okay, that'll be like number thirteen. That, I, that I've had okay uh, and I've got, are they a big deal the, the fire service fights are they the, do it it's against like, the police so you get the opportunity oh, mate, to yeah, smack absolutely. a copper absolutely know? yeah, yeah I'm, on, I'm on that yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they, they tend to be you know I've done yeah. two or three for the fire service that's how I really got into it I started with a white collar yeah uh, and then I had a couple for the fire service and then I went on fought in a couple of prize fighters where you fight three fights in one night that's right they, yeah they, they, <laughs> how did so, you do on them well I, I, do you know what I, I was the underdog by far because everyone in it, the minimum guy had had some like 26 fights and yeah. I'd had like five at the time. So I was a massive underdog. Yeah. Um, and the first guy I, I kind of fought in the first round, a lad, a lad called Jody, um, 70 odd fights as a pro. Wow. So I'm like, great, this is going to, he's the last person I wanted to kind of draw. Uh, and I did knock me down after about 30 seconds, clipped me behind the ear. And I was like, fuck, God, I've screwed it here. Floor all wavy. It's the first time it happened to me. I'm like, this, this doesn't feel right. Um, I got I got back up uh, and I ended up beating him on points. Uh, well, okay. I, I not really outboxing. I just walked him down and just went at him. Parage yeah, mentality. Just, just kept going, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, he went on to become the UK, um, or no, the world uh, bare knuckle heavyweight champion. Wow. Fought Dorian Darch at the O2 and beat him. So... Um, I didn't do too bad. Yeah, and then yeah, the second right. guy in that second round was a lad called Sean Williams, 200 plus fights, beat him on points. And then I fought a guy in the final, and that was my first loss. A lad called Danny. He went on, I lost on points. He knocked out both his people in about opponents in 30 seconds. Wow. I'd had two tough fights, one on points, and I was just spent. Not, it's not an excuse. He, he, was, a, he was ranked yeah, yeah, 18th yeah. as a pro when he kind of finally cool. turned pro after that. Um, and I don't think I could have done anything different, to be honest. I, I, so how many fights you've had? Have you had now? Thirteen. So, oh, okay. So, yeah, so that's a yeah, that's a one, one on. loss, one draw, uh, eleven wins. So. Okay, it's not bad. No, 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 it's all right. One, 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 one an area title for for one of these organisations, and they're not, yeah. they're not anything kind of major. But you know, it was more of a, I'm a boxing fan turned fighter yeah. more than anything. I, I've um, kind of just interviewed Lucas Brown you know okay. Lucas yeah, Big yeah, Daddy yeah, Brown I've yeah. had him on my own pop which I'll talk to you about in a bit yeah. but yeah so yeah it's no cool no I, I like I say I enjoy it but it's been charity fights for me and a few bits and pieces and that's it do you know what I mean yeah if anything else comes through the door I'm in a 55 now like I say I don't know where I'm going to go with it next but but you got to keep pushing if the right one comes I'll take it like, yeah you know? well you, you, you use it or lose it as they say don't yeah, you yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I certainly will carry on training for sure for, for without doubt because I say I'll, I'll be, be, be sparring as well. There's no point. You, you've got to keep sparring. Spar. I think sparring's the key. It's like yeah. that. You can do all the training in your life, but the actual spar. You know yourself. You do for a few rounds fight, of sparring. Yeah. For my first fight, I've never really had a, had a had a proper tear up in the ring, and I knew I was going to get into one. Yeah. And I got in touch with a friend of mine at, at I think he was at Two Para, and I went down to Col Colchester and I did a sparring session with their heavyweights. Right. And they beat the granny out of me. They beat the absolute granny out of me. But when it's I came away, for you. yeah, honestly, <laughs> me, yeah, me, me eye had gone, me, me, me nose was over here somewhere. And I thought, I ain't going to get it harder than that on the day. No. You know what I mean? I'd had, I think I'd done four, four sort of like 20-year-olds back to back, one round each. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they, they knocked it. They want it. We, yeah, super hat. They just wanted to beat the shit out of me. I, mean, super. <laughs> I like that, super hat. <laughs> they just wanted to beat me up. And yeah. it was like, they did. They did beat me up. Well, you, like, you know their fitness is yeah. like ridiculous as but well. But I knew I was never going to get it worse than that on a, on a white collar fight. Against, hard fight, against easy, anybody, you know? I mean? yeah, yeah. So I was like, I was quite happy with it. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. I've done it right at the end of the day. So no, fair yeah, play. Beating up, know? and I was like, no, but I love it. And I think that you're right. The key, the, the key to all this stuff is sparring. And you know, the, the first time to get punched properly in the face is not on the day of the race, is it? But it's not that. It's what people think that they they made a glass and they think they get punched in the face. Yeah. I'm, I'm sort of half training some people now for the fire service fight, and we go down and and they're like, oh, dead door. No, I was like, look, sparring, and they go in dead tense, and mm. they drain straight away. I was like, relax, you're going to get punched in the face. It's, it's inevitable. Coming anyway. It's coming anyway. It's yeah. coming, <laughs> and you'll think, it's not actually that bad. It doesn't actually hurt as such, does it? Yeah. So, but I started the boxing because it kind of channeled my, what I was going to get to was that I got, about four years ago, I was diagnosed with ADHD, okay. and that has explained massively how my thought process, yeah. why I was so angry, why I was so frustrated, why I learned the way I do. Yeah. And how my kind of brain works. So that's I always need something to to kind of 
do in the boxing zip yeah, for I'm now. Yeah, I'm pretty much the same. I've never been diagnosed with it, but I've never been sick with it. Do you know but what it I mean? wasn't so... an official... I, I, I was told basically by a GP, all they do is they do these series yeah. of questionnaires, told me where to find them. I did about four... <laughs> the all come yeah. back as pretty yeah, much yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you know I, if I if I went down that road in fact I might do it as a thing on here I might just see if I can take a few of them myself I, I, it will come back Yeah, I'll guarantee it but it's not, I mean? it's not a la- I'm not a big fan of the whole label but it, no. if it helps you understand your own brain and it's massively helped me understand my, yeah. my, my missus is a firefighter now she spotted it with me within three or four months of being together yeah. she was like have you ever thought about doing it she's absolutely brilliant and I yeah. was like yeah did a test and it's do you know what it's changed my life knowing how my brain works now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Which I didn't yeah. know before. So. No, that's cool. And I think mental health all round really is something Absolutely. that needs to be spoken about and understood by by everybody. So yeah. that A, you can understand yourself, but B, you can empathise and understand other people as well. Yeah, one hundred. Because a lot of a lot of my problems has been thinking about what other people would think about me if I said some of the things I wanted to. Yeah, well, it's about having no filter, isn't it? And yeah, I, go, if, uh, I know. You know what I, mean? I struggle. But actually, if they understood me, and, yeah. and actually, yeah, they could under, then you'd go probably all right, Phil. Nice one. You know what I mean? But, yeah. yeah, yeah. You come out with stuff. You don't have that, that connection between your brain and your mouth. Doesn't yeah. always kind of. I, I, I've learned. Oh, I have yeah. learned to kind of like think a little bit before yeah. I, I speak now. But it, for me, it's only a joke or whatever. But other people are like. Really? You can't say that? And I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so your podcast, let's quickly talk about your podcast because you want to drop that in. Yeah, it was just something I, I kind of started. Uh, wanted to, I've obviously watched loads of these with, with yourselves yeah. uh, and I just kind of fancied doing a bit myself. It started out, I've only done one, yeah, <laughs> and it was with Lucas Brown. I okay. messaged him. Is it up now? To, is it? Is it it's up, up now? It's on, it's on, we'll uh, stick a link to it under this. Yeah, we'll, oh, st- we'll awesome stick the link stuff. up under this. Yeah, so. the old Paratroop yeah. podcast. Yeah, um, sort of had a, an hour with Lucas Brown over webcam from nice. Perth, Australia. Had a good chat to him. Dead open about all sorts. You know, his Brilliant. favorite fighters. Fights. So yeah, I've got hopefully. Billy might be on this week. Billy, he's yeah. Ex, yeah, he's, he's X2 para. Yeah, Billy's um, a, good, a good friend of mine. Obviously, people know that. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely. He's a great friend of mine. Well, that's so. what I wanted to talk to you about as well. Yeah. If you'd be happy to do an episode with me via... I'll like, do an episode so. for you. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I figured if I ask yeah. you on air, you can't say no. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah. but, well, I'll, I'll come up and see you. We'll have a move around. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd love that as well. I think I messaged <laughs> yeah. you before, but I don't right. think you saw it. Yeah, today, I'm up for that. Yeah, definitely. There you go. So I've said that on here, so I can't get out of it. Yeah, you can't get out of it. I'll hold you to it. I'll hold you to it. All right, nice one. Listen, it's been fun having you on. Hopefully, like I say, you'll become a friend of our community here at Force Radio. We're, so, yeah. we're, we're happy to push anything that you're doing as well. Look, good luck with all your stuff. Good luck with your fight. Let us know how that goes. And like I say, everything to do with with stuff that Chris is doing, we'll we'll get it stuck in the in the bio for this and all the rest of it. It'll be down underneath. Johnny will sort that out. Great to see you, buddy. All Absolute right? pleasure. Yeah, nice Thank to see you. Thank you very you much. Right?